Humanitarian aid has a very distinct uh, definition. Um, you have to start by saying that uh, Venezuela is not undergoing a humanitarian crisis, although we are having an economic, uh, economic difficulties like many other countries have. Um, but usually when you talk about humanitarian crisis, you need to have something else happen before, like uh, um, it could be a, a natural disaster or in the middle of a war, you know, some sort of conflict where you were really blocked from actually uh, food supplies or medicine supplies and that, and that sort of thing. That's not what's going on in Venezuela. We have economic difficulties where you, have, you may have high inflation, you may have some of these problems, but people have access to, to, to medicine and, 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 and food. Uh, what, we are doing, what we do have, though, is some problems acquiring some of these products because of sanctions that, or what we call um, unilateral coercive measures that are being applied uh, by the United States and by some of its allies against Venezuela. These are, part of these sanctions involve uh, the blocking of uh, our assets and, and, and our accounts in the way that we can purchase, make uh, necessary purchase in, in, in an opportune uh, time frame where we could get some things that we are needed for the country's development, for the you know, so food supply, medicine, etc. in Venezuela. So when they talk about this, bringing this uh, aid to Venezuela, you know, uh, they even, the, the numbers they, they, they portray is, is kind of uh, laughable. I mean, in, in the last year, we, it's about $23 billion have been blocked uh, in Venezuelan accounts and assets. And they're talking about bringing aid in the terms of $20 million, which is nothing compared to what has been blocked. If there was any real concern about the Venezuelan people, about you know, the problems we're facing as a nation, about our difficulties, what we would do is lift those uh, uh, san so-called sanctions on Venezuela and, and you know, find ways to help us develop. This is definitely a publicity stunt. This is destined to, make, uh, to, make, uh, to portray the government as an oppressive government or you know, somebody that, that's not open to... Uh, outside uh, relations and so forth, but at the end of the day, this is all, you know, a, a way of promoting regime change in Venezuela. We've seen this before as well. I mean, if you in our history, in our continent, uh, we've had cases. I'll give you one that's in, in the, you know, that, that's very similar. In 1965, the Dominican Republic had a, a very autonomous government led by Juan Bosch, and you had. Uh, all of a sudden there was a move in the region to declare the Dominican Republic was undergoing a humanitarian crisis and needed humanitarian aid and the Organization of American States approved uh, the so-called uh, uh, sending of, of aid and yes in the beginning you had some you know food boxes and then came 8,000 Marines took over the island overthrew the government and installed a new government that was friendly to US interests. So this is not something that, you know, that, that we haven't seen before. And, and it sort of follows a pattern, you know, what they're trying to do uh, in, 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 you know, in the next few days is trying to force, or not even force, but try, try to show that they're bringing aid and the government is not receiving it and that it's insufficient. So, you know, first you, you bring this aid and then the pattern is that then you have people uh, requesting and then you need to have troops come in and keep the peace and that's, you know, at the end of the day what you have is a you know, whole process of invasion. So it's a pattern, it's a script. We've seen this before and we know that this is what it's aimed at. At the end of the day, I mean, what we're talking about is, I mean, we're facing difficulties. We're not even asking people to give things to Venezuela. We have money in our accounts. I mean, this is an oil producing country. I mean, there's revenues from oil production. Yes, the oil prices have been low and that's been part of our economic problems during the last few years, but we, we have some revenue. But the thing is, we can't use it. 
I mean, we have you know, the, the money goes into accounts and stays frozen for months, if at all. It comes, it returns, and we haven't been able to do the purchases. What we're asking is, you know, we having, we're, we're receiving aid from Russia, like you said, but there's, there's some medicines and some, and some products that are coming in that we're paying for. I mean, we're not, these are not donations in that sense. I mean, this is something, and, and that's what we're asking. We, if, if, if there was a real interest in the European Union or in the United States to help the Venezuelan people, then, you know, give us access to those products so that we can bring them in. The, the truth is, you know, this is, this is a pattern where they want to build the conditions so that, you know, people exasperate and there's a, a strong media campaign, there's a strong campaign in, in cell phones by uh, messages, rumors of, you know, something's going to happen, uh, the DA needs to come in, and, and getting people uh, in, in tension so that, so that, you know, that you could promote what, what they're really after is, you know, that, that the military does something against the government and overthrows the president. And all, if, you see, if you look at all the accounts of uh, the high officials from the United States that are getting involved, and you have congressmen, you have people from the State Department, you have people from, uh, from the White House, all they do is say, the military should allow this to happen. The military has a duty to allow this. So it's a message to military in Venezuela that they do something against the government. So it's very clear that, that at the end of the day, they want to promote tensions so that the military turns against the president, turns against the Constitution, and sets up a government that is friendly to corporate interests outside. Again, you know, it's, it's difficult. There, there are different factors that create an economic crisis, as we know. And we just mentioned something uh, before, you know, oil prices. For a, for a country that, that its main export is oil, the rise and fall of oil prices has an effect. And, and you know, the, since 2014, prices went down, and that definitely had you know, some, some issues, but at the end of the day, I mean, if we're blocked, if we have, uh, and, and I'll tell you this, you know, the, the, there's a political aspect uh, that, 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 uh, of attacks against Venezuela that, you know, that have been going on for many years now. And, you know, uh, for example, Venezuela has had poor uh, or, uh, you know, um, country risk ratings in its bonds. Um, because part of, as part of the campaign, even though we met our commitments you know, before the sanctions in the U.S., we, we met our commitments, we made our payments in time, and still we had risk factor, uh, risk factor higher than other countries such as maybe Chile, whose, you know, whose payments were not as, as uh, um, effective as the ones that Venezuela made. And, how, and those risk factors have risen, making our dues to an interest higher than other countries, for example, um, part of the blockade that is now going on against Venezuela is that you know uh, shipments are now being asked to make three, four stops more than they usually were asked to in the past. Every time you make one of those stops, that's going to have a charge of you know port uh, uh, for, for the port requirements. So you, you increase expanding. Um, you block the transactions from Venezuela, so that Venezuela can't. Uh, use dollars in some accounts, so you have to switch currencies to maybe euros or another uh, a currency once you make that switch. It, just last year, what, what we lost in making the conversion from dollars to euros, we could have, we could have covered a whole year's supply of HIV medicines uh, in our public uh, hospitals, but we had to lose it in commissions to trade, you know, currency. So this is part of uh, 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 limitations that have been put on the Venezuelan economy that end up affecting Venezuelan people. So it's not fair to say that this is something about, uh, you know, the program, the, 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 you know, the socialist program. On the contrary, if it were not for a uh, well thought out policy of helping people with certain subsidized uh, food products, and there's a monthly uh, box that we call CLAPS, it's a committee of local uh, supply and production um, that you know families uh, and communities get, um, which when a lot you know ba it's the basic uh, foodstuffs that that you could hold you out for you know about a month and so, and it's on a very uh, it's very accessible for for the people and subsidy prices. If it were not for those type of measures. We would really be deep in some, in, in, you know, in, in a crisis because of all these political attacks, that, or politically motivated attacks on our economy.